Jesus Rock 2, or as you know it, the Spec King. The fastest, most powerful gaming phone out there. We've been the envy of our friends the last couple of weeks, casually taking it out to test the camera, but mainly playing like maniacs. Is it addictive? Uh, you bet. It's a damn good phone, just from looking at the specs. But after having it with us for a while now, we think Asus did more than just cram the best hardware possible in it. They took one by one all the issues gamers, casual or pro, might have with it, and solved them. That's not an easy thing to do, not with competition from Xiaomi, Razer, and ZTE. So, how do they pull it off? Well, we think it boils down to one thing, ROG. For the past 13 years, ASUS Republic of Gamers has been perfecting its trade, working on tech that is tailored for gamers, demanding, passionate gamers who are used to building their own setups to get the best, most satisfying experience. The takeaway? Gamers crave customization. So what's the best thing about ROG Phone 2? You can tune it again and again and again. As you unlock the phone, just by pressing your finger on the screen, super quick and most of the time without hookups, you'll notice this symbol. Press it and you'll open what ASUS calls Armory Crate. Inside, you'll find the game's lobby and console tabs. Ignore the urge to click launch and go to game profiles. You'll be met by a detailed menu with some major minority report vibes where you can adjust every single gaming setting you can think of. Not for all games as a bundle, but separately, for every single one you've installed. Like the X mode, how much power consumption you're willing to sacrifice to run a game, how much CPU speed you'll need and what thermal limit you want to set. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Scroll on your menu to the left and you'll be able to adjust things like touch sensitivity in a game and sliding response depending on your gaming behavior. Are your moves fast and accurate, or are you just getting the hang of a new game? Refresh rate is, thankfully, dynamic. If you want to preserve battery or you're playing a game that doesn't support 120Hz refresh rate, you can set it up to 90 or even 60. By the way, ROG 2 is right now the only gaming phone with a 120Hz AMOLED screen. Razer 2 has the same refresh rate, but just an LCD panel, while Red Magic 3S and Black Shark 2 don't come close to the 120Hz. We were pretty impressed to see that ASUS thought of blocking calls for privacy concerns during gameplay. There's also a toggle to prevent the phone from switching to unknown Wi-Fi networks when available. Believe us, you won't know how annoying that transition is until you experience it for yourself. Done tuning your game? If you're like us, as much as you'd like to dive into PUBG, you won't help but feel like something's missing. Maybe, how do you make those air triggers extremely responsive to your particular press signature? Or how do you turn on the RGB lighting? You don't even have to leave the armory crate to figure that out. We found them in the same spot. Setting up the air triggers to listen to us was a breeze. Choosing the style, brightness, and rate of the lighting was more difficult, because everyone had their favorite. But we all agreed on this, strobing is the most aggressive, eye-straining one, so unless you want to impress, forget about it. But keep in mind, RGB lighting works only with X mode enabled. Just when we thought we couldn't customize this phone anymore, we bumped into Game Genie. We discovered it in Asphalt 9, but really it pops up on all games we played. Swipe right and there it is. Here we choose to lock brightness when we change environments, from direct sunlight to artificial light indoors. But we unlocked it when we played hours on end. It was better to let it go as low as it could to save battery. If you want uninterrupted gaming, you'll definitely disable calls and alerts and enable data only. Depends on your subscription. Oh, and we found extremely useful in real-time info like CPU power, temperature, and frames per second. It plays in this customization trend ASUS set, alerting us when to switch settings and to give us an idea of how performant the phone actually is. Now, what can this bad boy do when you're not gaming? Can you tailor it to your preferences just as much? Turns out you can. For instance, you can tune the display to your every knee, but that's not as impressive as this thing right here. The audio wizard. Fits snugly among the other toggles. It allows you to choose between how crisp, loud the sound should be if you're outdoors or indoors and set your sound scene from pop to rock or vocal, something mostly found in premium headphone apps. The DTS-X Ultra here is basically a badge showing us that while gaming or watching a movie, we'll get a super immersive experience thanks to spatial audio. Couple this with the front facing speakers and it's really a treat, but we'll come back to that later. One last thing you should know is that you can tune the battery as much as you want. ROG 2 has the biggest battery of all gaming phones, a monster 6000 mAh. Not only that, it also fast charges at 40 watts, surpassing its competitors. So it won't die on you when you're very close to victory. Or one of us actually played 5 hours uninterrupted before it drained the battery to 5%. Even so, 
You can be extremely selfish with it and hoard it like a pro. In Power Master, battery modes, you can disable the power consuming X mode and choose to opt out of internet or disable it once it goes into sleep mode and tell the phone to do it automatically while you sleep. There's also a battery care where you can basically tell it to fully charge the phone during the day and maybe not when you're sleeping to avoid overcharging. One downside to the battery and charging of ROG2 is a lack of wireless charging. Nope, Asus didn't include that one. But they did offer reverse charging through USB. Your friend's phone is out of juice? Help them out. Your battery can take the hit. Speaking of heat, how is the phone holding up with an overclocked chip? 120 hertz refresh rate and all the gaming gimmicks? Surprisingly well, actually. We found it could achieve peak performance despite the inner cooling chamber and while the phone did warm up, especially in the bottom left where the CPU is, the small vent and aero active cooler helped. With it on, the temp went down and thermal throttling wasn't an issue. In fact, we didn't really experience the usual side effects from such a phone, input lag or stuttering. We didn't feel annoyingly slow in high demand games like shooters and racing titles. And it's not a mystery as to why. It's the 240Hz touch sampling rate. Asus really covered the bases with this phone. The attention to detail surprised us. With this massive screen, you clearly should use it only in landscape mode, right? Not necessarily. We found a one hand mode option which resizes the screen so your fingers can reach it easier. Those of us who'd want to carry it in a pocket can enable pocket mode, decreasing touch sensitivity. In winter, you can do the opposite and make it respond to you even while you're wearing leather gloves. We tested it and it works. Not flawlessly, but it does. Before we head back to the Game Genie and in-game audio, let's talk a bit about the camera. After all, as much as you might play, you'll eventually end up filling the gallery with photos. Asus ROG2 is the device tailored for gamers. But how are the cameras? While for gaming this is the king of specs, in the camera department, ROG2 phone doesn't appear to have very impressive features, at least on paper. Well, the main camera works great. It has good color rendering in most situations, fast autofocus, excellent video stabilization, and overall good detail. More on this later. But the selfie camera is not so great. This one struggles the most with colors and details. Plus it over sharpens details when there's no need. We use the color checker to see if this is more than just a feeling. Guess what? These washed out colors you see right here are from the ROG2 selfie cam. The red and the magenta patches are extremely off when compared to the main camera. That's why we got such desaturated skin tones. Like many other Android phones, minus the Pixel 4, ROG2 features an ultra wide camera, which is great to see and honestly really fun to use. Plus it's so good to have the perspective beyond what our eyes are able to see. The 13 megapixel images are not sharp, but most competitors struggle with sharpness and details on the ultra wide lens, so we'll let that slide. But you do get good colors and bright light, although in low light, the colors are a little less vibrant. Now, let's go back to the main camera. This one uses the Sony IMX586 sensor with an f1.8 lens, 26 millimeters in full frame equivalent focal length and no optical image stabilization. That's not so bad because the electronic image stabilization does a pretty good job. In daylight, we have pretty few complaints. Sometimes the white balance is a little bit on the cooler side. Also, because the HDR Plus will kick in, where there's naturally high contrast, photos will take longer to process. But hey, you'll get good details in both highlights and shadows. We are pretty happy with the colors, although there's a slight cast of blue. Photos have good texture and clarity, but we noticed over sharpened details, especially when we zoomed in at 100%. This is something most companies do with their main wide cameras, even Apple. In portrait mode, ROG2 camera will nicely separate non-moving subjects, applying a pretty decent bokeh effect. In low light, ASUS ROG2 can take good enough photos for gamers. The night mode does help, slightly improving the dynamic range and getting rid of some of that noise. Just like the Zenfone 6, ASUS ROG2 takes solid videos. Autofocus is very good, fast, and precise. Almost too fast. Despite not having optical image stabilization, the phone's electronic stabilization is very good, even in 4K 60 frames per second. Oh yeah, many Android smartphones can't even shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second to begin with. We're looking at you, Pixel 4. Overall, details are pretty good, colors are not too saturated, the only thing we should point out is that in low light, noise is getting pretty visible. So yeah, the camera on ASUS ROG2 doesn't have all the bells and whistles that we're seeing on this year's flagship phones, but it's good enough if you're using the ROG2 mostly for gaming. You still here? Good. Let's get back to the gaming stuff. As you know, ROG2 ships with the external cooler, but you have to buy all the other accessories. So the bundle is by no means cheap. In fact, it's a pretty big investment. Is there a way to save money? Can you buy the phone without all the arm candy and still get a great experience? Our verdict? Yes. You can skip the twin view dock in the Kunai gamepad easily. First off, there's a very small number of gamers who even use the second screen. 
Second, you got air triggers, the improved edition, so no need for Joy-Cons. These are located on the right side of the phone at the far corners. They are flush with the frame but easy to find thanks to ridges that follow closely the overall design. Both are capacitive buttons. The touch sensitivity can be set up from the armory crate and offer haptic feedback. We remapped them from Injustice 2 to Asphalt 9, Ace Force, and more. We set them up to match our keys in-game and basically turn the phone into a controller. Even the PC gamers in us adapted to them fairly quickly. Hey, when you can use four fingers instead of two, can you complain? It was all done from the Game Genie. By the way, this might be the perfect untethered gaming device if you've ever just begun streaming. It democratizes the whole process, giving access to folks without a gaming setup, the ability to make content on Twitch or YouTube. As you go live, the selfie cam opens and you can choose video resolution, audio source, and put in description. Then all this phone has to do is keep a steady connection and capture your sound perfectly. Easier said than done, so Asus took extra measures and gave the ROG 2 a quad mic, two antennas, and a headphone jack, which is pretty rare nowadays. Because it's in portrait mode, it might hinder you when you play, but don't fret. We found an extra landscape fit USB-C port and headphone jack on the external cooler. None of us are streamers, but plenty of us are gamers. So we tried our hand at Mortal Kombat, Injustice 2, Shadow Fight 3, Last Day on Earth, and even Temple Run 2, since it was coming with that sweet 120Hz refresh rate. Bottom line? Rock 2 is not made for portrait mode playing, and it was slippery even with the case. In landscape, the air triggers become second nature. Charging while playing with the cooler on was actually comfortable, and the lack of stuttering, <laughs> that was a relief. The audio kept with us the whole way. We heard it loud and clear for the entire duration of a game thanks to Asus' dedication to getting two front-facing speakers. Ironically, Google had the same idea with Pixel 2 and 3, but ditched it on the Pixel 4. Coming back to the Asus ROG 2, we have to say the two amplifiers did their job and the DTS-X Ultra kept its word. In Asphalt 9, the drifting effects were outstanding and taking out others was extremely satisfying because we could fully hear the smashing and screeching of the tires. It felt badass racing to the finish line thanks to a really great playlist, with each song rendered fully and not too sharply by the DTS enhanced speakers. With headphones on, the experience was equally immersive. Guys, Asus ROG 2 is a trailblazer. It's not a smartphone that works for gaming, but a gaming handset. Right now, it's better than its rivals from ZTE, Razer, and Xiaomi in a couple of ways. First, a unique mix of 120Hz refresh rate plus 240Hz sampling rate on an AMOLED screen. Second, the biggest storage and configuration. You can get up to 1TB of storage with 12GB of RAM, with a base configuration of 128GB of storage and 8GB of RAM. Third, they have better rear camera sensors. Fourth, quad mic, two antennas. Fifth, the most advanced audio software for speakers and headphones, DTS-X Ultra. Sixth, the biggest battery cell and fastest charging. And finally, reverse charging. If you're a PC gamer that can't stay away from games on the road, this is the phone for you. It was designed for gamers that expect quality, performance, and attention to detail on mobile, just as much as they expect it from their PC builds. If you're a console gamer through and through, you'll definitely notice the Nintendo Switch vibes and the air triggers are just up your alley definitely the most well thought out gaming phone we've seen. The software can and will probably be improved on the next ROGs, but the hardware is here to support it, for a price of course. Asus ROG is not at all cheap. The 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage is $899 US on Amazon right now. But that's our take on it. Let us know how you find Asus ROG 2 if you buy it or not and tell us why. For more reviews like this, show us some love by clicking subscribe and hitting the bell button. Until the next one.